Hello, everyone. I hope everyone is doing good and all is well. Today's chat is going to be about the slaughter of African-American troops by Confederate soldiers during the Fort Pillow Massacre in Tennessee on April the 12th, 1864. Now, it's impossible to determine how many men actually lost their lives on this day. Now, some reports estimate it could have been possibly more than 295 federal African-American Union troops and 14 Confederate troops who lost their lives on this day. But others estimate over 500 surrendering Union soldiers who were primarily African-American lost their lives. Now, the reports differ when it comes to the number of lives lost. But they all mainly agree over the fact that the massacre was caused over Southern outrage, which stemmed from the North's use of black soldiers. Now, it's so sad and unfortunate what happened at Fort Pillow. And with that being said, let's chat. Fort Pillow was built in 1861, roughly 40 miles north of Memphis, Tennessee, at a bend in the Mississippi River. Now, ironically, Fort Pillow was originally a Confederate fort. In fact, it was even named after Confederate Brigade General Gideon J. Pillow. Now, a little interesting side note about Mr. Gideon J. Pillow. Now, according to the reports, During the Battle of Stone River, around about January the 2nd of 1863, Mr. Pillow, he hid behind a tree instead of leading his men into battle. Wow. But back to the story. Now, in 1862, the Confederacy were unable to defend the fort when the Union Army came in hot and seized control of most of the Mississippi River and West Tennessee. So they pretty much abandoned the fort at that time. Now, I go over the difference between the Union and the Confederacy in several of my other videos. But just in case you haven't checked, you know, them out and all of that good stuff. Let me go ahead and fill you all in. Now, the Union or the northern states, they believed in a unitary country free from slavery and based on equal rights. And the Confederacy or the southern states, they did not want to abolish or end slavery. But back to the story. Now, after the Confederacy abandoned the fort, the Union soldiers moved into the fort and they used it as a recruitment center and a pretty much a supply depot. And in January of 1864, Union General William T. Sherman, now he ordered the Union soldiers to abandon Fort Pillow. And the men originally, they obliged. And now the name General William T. Sherman, that should ring a bell with you all as he played a very important role in the March to the Sea. And I discussed him in my video about the Camilla Massacre. Now, if you are not familiar with what I am you know, referring to, I encourage you all to check out my videos over the March to the Sea, the Camilla, Ma- the Camilla Massacre. You know, many more of them, you no know, shameless plug um, anyway, but back to the story. Now, as I said earlier. The men, they originally obliged and they obeyed General Sherman's order to abandon the fort around about January of 1864. However, they returned to the fort in February of 1864 under the order of Union Major General Stephen A. Herbert. Now, he completely disregarded his superior's directives. And many believe had Mr. Herbert followed his superior's orders, then maybe the Fort Pillow Massacre would have never even taken place. But let's finish up the story, and we're going to discuss that a little bit further at the end. Now, according to the reports, between five to 600 Union soldiers occupied Fort Pillow, and the soldiers primarily consisted of troops who deserted the Confederacy, African Americans, and Southerners who believed in Union views or Union values. And in March of 1864, Confederate Major General Nathan Bedford Forrest, he launched his cavalry raid in western Tennessee and Kentucky. And he did this in an attempt to destroy the Union supply chains and capture the federal prisoners. Now, another quick little interesting side note that I would like to fill you all in on 
is you all should definitely be familiar with Mr. Major General Nathan Bedford Forrest. You should be familiar with him because he was the first Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan or the KKK. Now, I provide very interesting facts about the KKK and other white supremacy groups in my video about the Camilla Massacre, the Colfax, Louisiana Massacre, and several other videos as well. But let's keep on moving. Now, General Forrest, he and his 1,500 to 2,000 man cavalry, they set their sights on Fort Pillow around about April of 1864. And on the tragic morning of April the 12th, 1864, General Forrest and his cavalry, they surrounded Fort Pillow. General Forrest and his Confederate troops, they hit the Union with all they had. And the Confederate sharpshooters, they pretty much picked off Union troops with constant fire throughout the entire day. Now, the Union soldiers, they pretty much never really stood a chance when it comes to the type of attack that they endured. And the life of the Union Major Lionel Booth, it was taken, um, and he was the one who was actually leading the soldiers, the Union soldiers. His life was taken by the bullet of one of the Confederate snipers. Now, his second in command, Major William Bradford, he took control of the Union troops after Mr. Booth's life was taken. And this probably wasn't the best idea or the best decision as he was said to be a very incompetent leader. Now, a little interesting side note about Major Lionel Booth is Major Lionel Booth, well, Major Lionel F. Booth, I'm sorry. His real name is said to be George H. Lanning. Now, this was said to have been discovered when he wrote a letter to his family. And it's said that he went by an alias because this was very common when it came to war. I mean, the soldiers, they use aliases to pretty much hide their fate from their families in case that they never return. Now, we're not sure if this is why Mr. Lanning went by the alias of Booth, you know, or if he was actually using the alias to hide from someone. And I say that because his letters that were discovered, they raised many, many questions. But back to the story. Now, by around 3.30 p.m. that afternoon um, during the Fort Pillow Massacre, after hours of fighting and gunfire, Major General Forrest, he demanded that the Union troops surrender. But Union Major Bradford, he wasn't quite ready to surrender at that time. Bradford, now he was hoping that the Union boats coming in along the Mississippi River, he was hoping that they were going to bring in reinforcements. So he tried to be a little slick, and he called for a one-hour ceasefire. Now, Bradley's plan probably would have worked if Confederate Major General Forrest had not spotted the Union boats and caught on to him. Now, when Forrest saw those boats, he was furious, and he sent his men to block them. And... All hope that the Union soldiers had for their reinforcements was lost at that time, which is very sad. And about 20 minutes after that, the Confederate troops, they stormed the fort with great force and they were met with very little resistance. And during all of this commotion and all of the fighting, Union Major Bradford, he fled to the Mississippi River while his men stayed behind and surrendered to the Confederacy. The Union soldiers, they were supposed to be taken as prisoners of war. This was discussed in the very beginning, but instead, they were slaughtered by Confederate troops as they surrendered. I mean, some of the Union soldiers who did survive the attack, they later provided their testimonies as to how the Union soldiers were massacred after they surrendered. And Confederate General Forrest, remember, he's the one who, of course, was leading the Confederate troops. He also reported on how his men slaughtered the Union soldiers who were surrendering as well. And this cruel act by the Confederacy is what caused the Union to refuse to participate in any future prisoner exchanges with them. And now, of course, we know from the previous massacres that I have discussed in my previous videos Many massacres, they're pretty much played off as battle and it's kind of discovered later that no battle took place at all. And in fact, they were massacres. Well, that wasn't the case when it comes to the Fort Pillar Massacre. 
Now, the Fort Pillow Massacre, it was known to be a cold, heartless massacre immediately after it took place. But, of course, nothing was ever done about the massacre or the 500 or more lives that were lost. And there is still major controversy about the massacre to this very day. Now, the former site of Fort Pillow, it is now a Tennessee state park. And before we close today, I do want to give you all one more interesting fact about something involving Mr. Major General Nathan Bedford Forrest. Remember, I said he's the first Grand Grand Wizard of the KKK. Now, I would like for you all to know that there was a street named after him called Forest Street located in Valdosta, Georgia, which was recently renamed to Barack Obama Boulevard in 2021. I thought that would be an interesting fact to fill you all in on, you know, since he is in today's story. And well, that brings us to the end of today's chat. So tell me what you all think. I mean, do you all think the massacre was Hobart's fault? I mean, since he disobeyed his superior's order and he had the Union soldiers move back into the fort because had he not made this decision, the massacre probably would have never taken place. Do you all feel like that? Or do you all feel the massacre would have taken place regardless of the men's location because the Southerners were outraged? I mean, do you all feel that Major Bradford was a coward for fleeing and leaving his men like that while they were surrendering? I mean, it's very, very sad what happened at Fort Pillow regardless, you know, and it's very sad how little some people value human life. I want you all to please drop your thoughts in the comments below. Please like the video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. You know, we're still on our climb. If you all would like to support the channel in a monetary way, the information to support will be in the description of the video below. And until next time, peace, love, and blessings.